Hello viewers, this is Wagda Renal taking you through today's tutorial on O-Level Physics and in this video we are going to go through the solutions to O-Level Physics of UNEP 2019 and particularly we shall, go, we shall look at question 2 of Physics Paper 2. So where necessary these constants can be used during this solution. And this, I believe this is the very question I left in the previous video and by now you have already tried it out and ready to check your progress so let's get started. Now we shall start with question 2a. Question 2a says Roman 1 state Archimedes principle that is one mark and Roman 2 describe an experiment to verify Archimedes principles so let's get started so we shall start with roman one whereby they told, want us to state archimedes principle and we shall say archimedes principle states that when a body is fully or partially not that word fully or partially immersed in a fluid it experiences an upthrust equal to the weight of the fluid displaced so what does this word fully or partially immersed mean? Now fully means the body is entirely within the liquid. I think I can see that it's below this meniscus. On the other hand, partially immersed means part of the body is above the meniscus of the liquid. So basically that's what they mean by fully or partially immersed. Now we shall go to Roman 2 whereby they want us to explain describe an experiment to verify Archimedes principle. In other words, they want us to verify that the, body, the upthrust of a body is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. Now let's see how it is done. So the first step is that the weight W0 of the sinker in air is measured using a spring balance and recorded. What does that mean? It means that you connect this sinker to a spring balance and you read off the reading on the spring balance. Now what does a sinker mean? A sinker is a body which can sink in a fluid. Now the next step is that the overflow can is completely filled with water to spout level, not that word spout level, and a beaker is put under its spout. So this is the overflow can, this is the water and this is the spout level. This one is the beaker placed below the spout, but this beaker initially it is empty and this body initially it is not in the overflow can. So next is that the sinker is then fully immersed in the water and its weight W1 is measured and recorded. So we place now this sinker in, in the water so that this part of the liquid is displaced into this beaker. Now what happens is that the, weight, the reading of the spring balance will change to a reading of W1. So let that reading of the spring balance be W1. One. Now, after getting W1 and W0, you, be, you can be able to calculate the upthrust on the sinker from the formula that U, which the upthrust is equal to weight of the sinker in air minus the weight of the sinker in the liquid. Now after calculating the upthrust, what next is to the water collected in the beaker is weighed to determine its weight. So next is to get the weight of the water in the beaker, in other words, weight of the water that has been displaced by the body. And after getting that weight W2, what we are going to do, we are going to compare that weight with the upthrust. And what you will realize, it is found that W2 which is the weight of the displaced liquid is equal to the upthrust which verifies 
Archimedes principle. Remember, Archimedes principle stated that up thrust will be equal to the weight of the fluid display. So basically, that's how they can verify Archimedes principle. Now, next, let's see how marking can be done. So if a, a principle is a principle, so the whole of this set, the whole of the, that statement correct, you'll be able to get your full mark. The next, remember in that experiment we need to take some readings. So we have to take the reading of the weight of the sinker in air, and that is one mark. Then also the reading of the weight of the sinker in the liquid, that is also another mark. Then next we have to calculate the up thrust and also calculate the weight, also determine the weight of the liquid displaced. And after that we have to compare and conclude. So basically that's how the five marks could come about. Now we shall go to part B. Part B says, Roman 1, explain why a hygrometer is made with its bulb wide and its stem narrow. So they want us to explain why the bulb of a hygrometer is wide and the stem is narrow. Then Roman 2, they want us to state two examples where a hygrometer is commonly used. So how? let's see how a hygrometer looks like. So this is a hygrometer and this is the stem. I think you can see that it is narrow and this is the bulb. I think you can see that it is wide. So they want us to explain why this bulb is wide and why this stem is narrow. So shall start with the bulb being wide. And we shall say that an increase in the bulb increases the volume of the instrument, which in return increases the volume of the liquid displaced so as to overcome the weight of the sinker. In other words, when you increase the bulb, it means buoyancy increases. Next, we have to explain why the stem is narrow. So the stem, remember, is a graduated glass tube as you saw here. So this is a graduated glass tube. Now narrowing the stem increases the sensitivity and how? This is because the markings are considerably further apart hence accurate readings can be registered. Remember when the, these readings are compact it is not it is, becomes difficult for you to measure correct readings but if they are further apart it means that you can read them with ease so basically that's why they narrow the stem and roman 2 roman 2 they wanted us to state two examples where a hygrometer is commonly used so one we can say that the hygrometer is used to test the purity of the leak of milk by measuring its relative density. It is also used in breweries to test purity of alcohol that is beer, wines, etc. And how is it done? By measuring their relative densities. So pure alcohol that has a, a, a standard relative density and also impure alcohol also has a relative density. So when the relative density of alcohol deviates from the standard relative density means that it is impure and also it can also be used to state the charge is to test the state of the charge of a car battery by measuring relative density of the acids in it remember when a car battery is fully charged its relative density is one is 1.25 so if it goes below that it means that it needs to be charged so this hygrometer can be used to test whether the car battery needs to be charged or it is fully charged. Basically, that's what they wanted in part B. And let's see how marking can be done. So first of all, an incre this increasing volume, increasing volume of the liquid displaced, you get yourself half a mark. And also weight of the sinker. Overcoming the weight of the sinker, you get yourself another half a mark. So basically, that's, that was the mark for 
the bulb being white. Now what about the stem? When the stem is narrow, the sensitivity increases and why does it increase? That reason why it increases, you get yourself another half a mark. So basically, that's how the two marks came about. Now shall go to Roman 2. Roman 2, what we do, we mark the first two. So that's why you have to be precise and accurate to the point. If they ask two, you give two and stop there because however much you give more than two, we for us what we shall do, we shall mark the first two. Now shall go to part C. Part C says a spring balance reads nine newtons when a solid metal is suspended from it in air. The density of the metal is 6.25 grams per centimeter cubed and that of water is 1 gram per centimeter cubed. Find, sorry, if the ball is lowered into water in a measuring cylinder until it is completely immersed, find Roman 1 the volume of the water displaced and that is 3 marks Roman 2 the reading of the spring balance so what we know we know the density of, wat of water and also know the density of the metal and the reading of the spring balance when the metal is in air in other words the weight of the metal or weight of the solid in air is known also so what shall we do First of all, you have to know that relative density of solid can be given as density of solid over density of water. Or, it can also be given as weight of solid in air over upthrust of the solid in water. So, when we quote the two formulas and substitute, we shall realize that the density of the solid is 6.25, which was given, and the density of water was 1 gram per centimeter cubed. Also the weight of the solid in air was given as u. Now the upthrust of the solid in water is what we don't know and shall let it to be capital U. When you cross multiply, take the, multiply this with that and this with that, you come up with this step and when you simplify, you shall come up with u as 1.44 Newton. So basically this is the upthrust. And we know that upthrust in water is equal to the weight of water displaced. What does that mean? Upthrust is 1.44 which was already given. Now the weight of the water displaced will be equal to the volume displaced multiplied by the density of the water multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Because volume times density will give you mass. Now mass times acceleration due to gravity will be able to give you the weight. Remember, we know the density and we know the acceleration to gravity. So, density of water will be this. Now, why are we using a thousand, a thousand instead of one? It is because when we are now going to use SI units. Remember, earth thrust was in newtons. Because it is in newtons, it means the volume has to be in meters cubed and this one has to be in kilograms per meter cubed and this one has been meters per second squared so basically that's what we are going to do this one is in newtons so newtons meters cubed meet kilograms per meter square per meter cubed and grams sorry meters per second when i make v the subject i'll come up with v as 1.44 times 10 to the power negative 4 meters cubed. I think you can see that this is now meters cubed because you have to use SI units. Roman 2, they wanted the reading of the spring balance. You know that the reading of the spring balance will be equal to the weight of weight in air minus the up thrust in water. Now we know that the weight in air was 9 and the up thrust was 1.44. When you subtract, you shall come up with 7.56 newtons and basically that's what they wanted now let's see how marking can be done so now this half a mark is for you to use this formula to come up with this 
and another half a mark is for you to use this formula to come up with this and this other half a mark is for you to equate the two when you equate this with this that's when the other half a mark will come from so first mark is for the left hand side second mark is for the right hand side and lastly for equating another half a mark is for you to get the value of the up thrusts so the other mark is for you to get calculate the weight of the liquid displaced which is this and this other half mark is for you to equate the weight of the liquid displaced with the up thrust. Now this half a mark will be for this magnitude using calculator correctly to get that and this other half a mark is for you to use the correct SI unit. Remember it has to be meters tubed. So that gives you the four marks. The another mark will be this for substituting reading of weight in air minus up thrust in water and lastly the final answer so if you realize you can see that here they gave us three three marks for each part but first we are given the first part four marks and the second part two marks why it is because this up thrust was shared the value of that up thrust was shared by both romans so what we do the max the marks taken by getting this up thrust will be shared by the two Romans. So one mark will be will come from this one and another mark will come from this. What does that mean? It means that this one will now be four marks and this will be two marks. So basically that's why there is a change in allocation of marks. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I believe you have now mark yourself and check your progress i'm going to leave you with another question to check your progress further So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching this video and be reminded that the solutions to the assignment I've left you with will be available in the next video. So if you have not yet subscribed, please click the subscribe button below so that you will receive a notification when the video with these solutions has been has been released and if also if you know of other students who are not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via their, your whatsapp and facebook and also other means of social media say that we all excel as a family